Okay, so if you look at all the budget offerings from Samsung in 2023, personally, I don't think they provide the best value like they used to before. I reviewed the Galaxy A14 5G a couple of months ago and I didn't quite like the phone. I have the Samsung Galaxy M14 5G with me and it's also not so good. Likewise, other budget phones like the Galaxy A04 and A04s are also not the best value and I have been pretty vocal about that in my reviews too. But finally, with this phone, the Galaxy A24, Samsung is offering very good specs for the price and it seems like quite a balanced offering. Its price starts at 29,000 Nepali rupees and it's launching in many parts of the world very soon, including India for around 17,000 rupees. And for that price, you get some pretty good stuff here. Okay, starting the review, one of the nicest things about the Galaxy A24 has to be its design. It's sleek, it's good looking, and it's almost as good as the more expensive Galaxy A34 and the Galaxy A54. Even if you put it side by side with the similarly priced Galaxy A14, you can definitely see that the A24 has a superior design. I mean, the A14 is bulky and does not feel that good on the hands, while the Galaxy A24 is more handy and comfortable. I love it. Not to mention that it's also much, much better than something like the Galaxy M14. So in the top 20,000 price segment, design-wise, the Galaxy A24 stands out. You get a couple of nice color options, and besides the screen one, the gradient blue version looks cool too. The other two, black and red, are just okay. Likewise, you get a dual SIM tray with space for a dedicated micro SD card too. There's a headphone jack and the buttons on the side are nice and clicky as well. The side-mounted fingerprint sensor is fast and reliable enough too, so design-wise, I do not have any complaints. Next, I really like this display. It's a 90Hz AMOLED screen and along with the usual perks of an AMOLED panel like good contrast, viewing angles, punchy color reproduction, I also found this display to be among the brightest in this price range. The only thing that's a bit disappointing here are these thick bezels and this outdated teardrop notch. But overall, if you can look past that, the quality of this screen is really good. The touch is quite responsive and Samsung has included decent haptics too. So the overall typing experience on the Galaxy A24 is nice. I was also expecting good audio here, but sadly you only get a single speaker that sounds a bit too sharp for my liking. It's good enough for watching movies and stuff, but while listening to music, let's just say it's not the most pleasant. In terms of chipset, you don't get a 5G chipset in here, but for me, I don't mind that much since 4G is alright for me. Anyway, the MediaTek Helio G99 chipset that's powering the Galaxy A24 is almost as good as the Diamond City 920 when it comes to real-life usage. We've seen the Helio G99 in action on a couple of phones before and I would say that it does well in normal everyday tasks and you won't feel the Galaxy A24 being sluggish or anything like that. In fact, I found its performance to be much better than the Galaxy A14 5G that comes with the Exynos 1330. Plus, I played a couple of games like PUBG and Call of Duty and had a fairly smooth gaming experience. In the optimum settings, you can get a stable 40fps gameplay on PUBG, while Call of Duty hits an average of 60fps without any significant frame drop. So, as I said, I am pretty happy with the performance. And if you're not a heavy user, you will not have many issues using this phone. Okay, another thing I like about the Galaxy A24 is that it runs on full version of One UI, unlike other Samsung budget phones that ship with One UI Core. Hence, you're not missing out on uh, features like secure folder or knock security either, so that is great too. Samsung has also promised 4 years of OS and 5 years of security updates on this phone, which is something none of the brands provide in this price range. Now, will the phone be able to handle those updates two or three years down the line is a different discussion altogether, but I am just happy to see such commitment from Samsung even on their budget devices. Okay, cameras. I am happy to report that I found its cameras to be the best in its price range. It has a 50 megapixel primary camera with OIS, a 5 megapixel ultra wide angle sensor, and a 2 megapixel macro lens. 
During good lighting conditions, this main lens is able to pull out good details and dynamic range. Samsung's punchy color reproduction looks pleasing to the eyes too and overall this camera is consistent in various lighting conditions too. I also compared it with the OnePlus Nord CE3 Lite and in most scenarios, the Galaxy A24 did better, whether it be handling dynamic range or skin tone in portraits and selfies. I like the vibrant color reproduction that Samsung produces in comparison to the slightly duller images of the Nord CE3 Lite. Just something I noticed here is that the OIS does not work as well as it should. Like even if I shake a little bit while clicking a picture, the output comes out blurry, which should not be the case with a phone that has OIS. Anyway, its 5 megapixel ultra wide angle camera is just average with little to no details as you zoom in on the photos. But these days, almost all brands are excluding it at this price segment. So at least you get one here. Nonetheless, the overall output photography wise has been more than satisfactory and you won't be disappointed with this phone at all. However, I can't say the same regarding the videography department though. Because of the chipset limitation, the phone is only able to shoot at 1080p from both the back and front cameras and even the video quality and stabilization here are strictly average. The battery life on this phone is good though, if not the best. Considering it has a 12nm processor and no LTPO display and such, I was only able to get around 5 to 5.5 hours of screen on time, which means under normal usage, the phone would last me a single day without any issues, but not more. In terms of charging, it supports 25 watts, but as with all Samsung phones, you don't get a charger inside the box. So you'll have to chip in extra money to get a charger, which takes around one hour and 25 minutes to get the phone fully charged from zero to 100%. All right, so if you are someone who's not obsessed with 5G or you don't have stable 5G connectivity yet, I think this phone is a good budget option from Samsung. It has well-balanced features with very less to complain about. You get a nice design here, an excellent AMOLED screen, reliable performance and software, uh, you get consistent cameras and good battery backup. But if 5G is an absolute necessary for you, I would recommend you go with phones like the OnePlus Nord C3 Lite or the iQoo Z7 under the 20,000 price bracket. The upcoming Lava Ogni 2 looks very promising too. Um, I still don't recommend the Galaxy A14 5G because I think it falls short on a lot of aspects just to deliver the 5G experience. So everyone, that was all for my review of the Samsung Galaxy A24. I hope you liked the video and if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell icon. Till then, I'm Prathima Adhikari and thank you so much for watching.